In this short video, we will demonstrate how to calculate a probability mass function and a cumulative distribution function for a binomial distribution using Excel. So what I already copied in here is just a formula for the binomial um, probabilities. And we will use that later. Okay. But firstly, recall that the binomial distribution has two parameters, n, the number of trials, and pi, the uh, probability of success in one trial. Remember, binomial uh, experiments are really repeated Bernoulli experiments, where all we need to know is the probability of success. So you can set that however you want. Uh, here, for now, we'll use 50 trials and a probability of success of 0.2 in each trial. So if you have 50 trials, then we have to first think about what are the possible outcomes for our binomial random variable. The binomial random variable is the number of successes out of the 50 trials. Uh, we could, of course, have no success at all. So the first outcome is a zero, or one, or two, or three, and so forth. So I don't have to type, I don't want to type all the way to 50. I highlight this and then you see that little green box here. I'll drag that down and you can already see Excel predicts what should go in here. I'll pull that all the way down to 50. So here we will have to calculate 51 probabilities. Now, obviously you don't want to do that by hand. You want to use Excel to do that effectively. We will first use sort of the shortcut using Excel, but then we will also implement this formula here. Okay. Um, because, you know, I may ask you questions where the right formula doesn't exist in Excel. So you need to know how to implement proper formula in Excel. So here's how we're going to do it. Um, you go in that field, you start with equal to indicate to Excel a formula is coming. Now, you will not know, I never know from the top of my head what the formula is. So we want to calculate something about binomial distributions. So I'll just type binomial and you see there's already a range of options coming up and binomial distribution, that looks pretty promising. So let me just press enter here. Uh, so I go back in, oh, it didn't happen, binom binomial distribution. Oh, sorry, I highlight that and press a tab. So, okay, so here we start. So there are a number of inputs we need. Number of S, number S, number of successes, trials, probability, and cumulative or not, we'll get to that. So number of trials, we want to calculate the probability for starting for zero trials. So we put that in here. Uh, next input uh, for zero successes. Next input number of trials, that's 50. We have that up here. Okay. I fix, I put the dollar signs in here to fix that cell because as I copy that cell down, I don't want that cell to move. And then, uh, comma, now the probability that's here. And again, I fix that cell, put a dollar in front of the D and in front of the three. So that cell is fixed as we copy the cell. And then the last input cumulative true, if you want the cumulative distribution function. For now, we only want the probability mass function. So we need to enter false. So we have that here. So what's the probability of zero successes if you have 50 trials with success probability of 0.2? Well, it's pretty darn small. Okay, it's e to the negative five. So it's four, 0 0.00001427. Right? That's the probability. It's very small, close to zero. So now we want the same formula in here. Of course, we're not going to type it again. We highlight that field and we copy it down. In fact, if you double click on that little green square, it will automatically fill all the columns below all the way up until that 50. Excel is clever enough to realize how far you want it. Now, if you click, whenever you do that, you should click that all the references are still right. So just click on any of these formula and calculates the probability for four successes, 50 trials, success probability 0.2 and the false is still there. 
so probability mass functions. So this has worked. So you've seen we entered the dollar signs for the n and the pi, and therefore these cells don't move. But that number of successors, A11 here, that didn't have a dollar sign, so that just moved down as we copied the cell exactly as it should be. So brilliant. Now by hand, how would we do that by hand? So now I'm basically saying let's implement this formula here uh, in Excel. So here we go. This will be quite a handful before we do that, actually. You see how we can reference to cells by their cell name. So we will now use the n and the pi, and we that's always d2 or d3. What you can actually do in Excel, and that can be very useful, is you give these cells names. So this cell here, we want to name n, and then we can use that in the formula. So you highlight up here where it says d2, and type an n in here and press enter. And then here, this one we shall call pi, so we highlight this type pi and press enter so from now on you can call these cells by either this one for instance calling d3 or by just typing pi and that will be much easier okay so now let's implement this formula so we need factorial n over x where x is the number of successes n tried so we have uh, let's do formula let's actually do the factorial last so we do the bit after the factorial first so we have times pi to the power of x that's the number of successes that's here times 1 minus pi to the power of and that now needs to be in parentheses n minus x so n minus but x we have to click on this one Okay, so the formula isn't complete yet because we're, we're missing that, fact, that that combinatorial combination here, n over x. So that is n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial. So factorial, well, let's see, does Excel have a formula for that? Uh, indeed, fact, so if you click on that uh, and then tab, that is the factorial formula, so factorial n, so I'll type n, okay, and then divided by, and we'll put that again into brackets, factorial x, so not fat, but fact, factorial x, and then times, remember we always need a times in here, factorial uh, n minus x, so n minus, and this is the x. And then I close the brackets. Uh, so the brackets should all be, no, there's still a bracket missing. Yes, so you can see the color coding in the bracket. So I could see there was a, a black open but didn't close. So let's press enter here. And as we've done it right, we have the same result. Okay, which one would you rather do? Of course, this one here. Okay, but still we, we did that, copy that down, again check that everything has been done right and we have the A16 whenever we need X and otherwise we have N and Pi, so that looks good. So let's actually plot this function because so many, it will be easy, it will be good to represent that somehow. So I highlight all of these values and i go to insert for probability mass functions we need something like this okay and let's just say a probability mass function for a binomial and here it is so you can add uh, you can add access titles as you should whenever you present something in a um, in a work for instance in an essay so here's the x and as the vertical axis we have uh, p of x p of x okay so this is now a nice uh, probability mass function so let, let's uh, get that to the top here get a little bit smaller Okay, and so you can see the outcomes which are most likely from here are outcomes around 10, 11, 12, 
And perhaps that's not surprising, given that the probability of success is 20%. 20% of 50 is around 10, right? Okay. So, and if you if you look at these numbers, you can see the most likely outcome is indeed 10. It's about 14% probability. So let's also look at the uh, CDF. Let's put that here. Okay, the CDF. Now the CDF for the lowest outcome is just, oh, actually by hand, let's do it first by hand. So the lowest outcome is just this first probability. Okay, and then the PDF for one is, remember the probability that the outcome is one or smaller. So we're basically having whatever we have here previously plus that outcome. And now we can copy that down and we should end up at the end at a value very close to one or basically one. And you see that here, basically rounded to one, this value is from 30 onwards, that value is one. Now, could we do that using the function as well? Now, remember this formula here, let's actually copy that. So I highlighted it, control C and copy it and press escape. And now I'll go into this field and I paste it, control V. So firstly, this would just calculate, of course, exactly the same value here. But if I go in and for the cumulative input type true, instead of false, so we want the cumulative distribution function, well, the first value doesn't change, but as we now copy it down, again, we see we now get the cumulated values. Okay, and again, they are the same. And let's do a graphical representation of that. So we highlight, uh, we highlight this. Uh, oh, sorry. We highlight this. And then we go to insert. And the CDF, we usually do line functions, line graphs. So here we have that graph. Let us just make that a little bit smaller. So out here. Uh, this is the um, CDF for binomial. And again, we want to add the chart elements, the axis titles, that was just the X and axis title vertical. That is now the P, so the capital P of X. No, sorry. So here we go. Okay, so you can see that CDF, of course, takes this typical, it's called a sigmoidal change. It starts at zero, it goes up to one, and then stays at one. And the nice thing about this sort of setup is here, when you do these calculations, you may now wonder, okay, what is the difference? What, what, how do these distributions change if you change the probabilities of success. So let's change that to 0.4. And since all the formulas depend on that pi value, everything will change, including the PDFs and the CDF. Okay, or 0.8, if the success is 0.8, and perhaps not surprisingly, we expect mainly around 40 successes, which is 80% of 50. And perhaps we can already anticipate something here we will see later. Let me just change that back to 0.2. Uh, if you know about the normal distribution already, you can see that this shape here looks very much like a normal distribution, just that it's a discrete distribution, not a continuous as a normal distribution. But because we have this shape looking like a normal distribution, it turns out that we can actually approximate binomial distributions very closely with normal distributions if you have many possible successes. Okay, uh, this is the end of this video.